And hello everybody. Um, we are doing a screencast today um, talking about the German expansion um, and the Axis expansion in Europe between the years 1936 and 1941. Now 1936 through September 1st, 1939 is pre-war and this will be somewhat of a review of what we talked about the periods between the war and then we're going to look and see how successful uh, Germany in particular was in the opening years of World War II. So you see a map of Europe here uh, at the beginning and let's what we want to do today again is we're going to look at how by 1941 the Axis, mostly Germany, had conquered almost all of Europe and were at the high, high point of their dominance. Uh, in December 1941, America enters the war, and that marks the turning of the tide in some ways. Uh, but mostly the turning of the tide is going to take place in here, in a battle called Stalingrad, later on in 1942 and 1943. So let's look at the map. Germany expands in the pre-war period um, through some political manipulation. They occupy the Rhineland. Um, we talked about this. This is the area that borders um, France, Luxembourg, and Belgium, and they send troops here to occupy it. This was forbidden by Versailles. France did nothing, and you know they didn't respond. If France had responded, Germany would have pulled back, but they didn't. Then they conduct the Anschluss with Austria using political pressure uh, and some sentiment on the Austrian part. Austria was torn. Uh, Austria, Hungary had been a large empire in World War I and they had lost territory all over the place. And so they felt that, you know, this might help them. There were some people, there was some uh, support for fascism in Austria. So Germany now breaks Versailles and they join the Anschluss. They rebuild their army. Their army is strong and England and France do nothing. The Soviet Union has so many problems internally. Uh, that they're really not able to respond and probably England and France would not have wor worked very well with the communists of the Soviet Union. Let's look at 1939. This is uh, this was a huge move. This is when Chamberlain said we have peace in our time, the British Prime Minister. Germans take this area here. This is the Sudetenland. We talked about this. You can see it was surrounded by Germany and it was a dramatic culture. And Hitler uses the ruse that these people are being persecuted by the Slovakian government and uh, uses it to basically have uh, England and France, but mostly England, sell out this part of Czechoslovakia. Well, you can see from the map now that Czechoslovakia just has this little strip and Austria is here and they could be attacked here and they could be attacked from the east. They're surrounded. They can't defend themselves. Hitler just takes it. He had promised, I, I'm satisfied, I won't do anything else, but he just goes ahead and takes uh, the rest of Czechoslovakia. It becomes an Axis a proxy state, a puppet state. So now you can see that this is now before World War I. Uh, in other areas, Albania is attacked, and Libya had been attacked by Italy in the 1930s. So Italy was advancing, and Germany was advancing uh, pre-war. So were the Allied powers. The Allied powers had these areas. This was French territory. England, France, and Poland was joined in this alliance. And England and France had never made a promise to Czechoslovakia. But they did promise Poland that Poland was threatened that they would defend Poland and stand with her. Well, they get a chance to check that, that before that happens, um, right after this happens, the Soviet Union, which is like an arch enemy of... Germany, they sign a non-aggression pact, and we saw the picture of the marriage between Hitler and Stalin as the unusual um, marriage partners. Well, they sign this non-aggression pact, they promise they will not attack each other. And this gives Hitler a free hand to attack Poland. France and England are allies of Poland, but they do nothing. When Germany attacks Poland, France could go after and threaten um, Germany, but they don't. Germany had, could keep just a few men there to, def to defend this whole frontier because France did nothing. Poland is uh, being attacked, and two weeks after the invasion starts, the Russians, as part of the plan, they attack from the east. And Poland is, is uh, basically conquered in about 30 days. There's a great book um, 
called The Thousand Hour Day, which talks about the fall of Poland. It's really an amazing book. Now Germany really goes to town. Look at what they do. In 1940, the spring of 1940 is one of the most amazing times in military history. First, Germany attacks Denmark and Norway. Then they, then they go after France. And they go ahead and attack France. And France, which had never lost this air up to here, this was the whole battlefield of World War I. But in six weeks, they conquer the whole of France. They drive to the sea and cut off the British Army at Dunkirk. And then they start just drive through Paris. They march through Paris and they sweep into southern France. And they conquer France. They also have other moves that they're doing. They take over French Morocco. And they take over Algeria and Tunisia. So now all of northern Africa is under control of Italy and Germany. Germany spreads into Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria. The Italians are struggling in Albania, but they manage to, they manage to hold it. And the, Germany basically has almost all of Western Europe under their control, uh, and Italy. The Soviet Union, we talked about this in the screencast, they go after these areas here that, they, that Lenin had given up. Remember, Lenin had given these up as part of the Russian Revolution. They take that. And then in 1940, they attack Finland. And it takes them a while, but they conquer Finland. The Battle of Britain is an air battle, and this is where German forces attacked uh, English industry and cities. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the bombing of cities was very controversial. England had also bombed Berlin, and there are many, many historians who talk about how Churchill bombed Berlin to kind of bait Hitler into attacking cities. At first, it was to soften up England and, and take care of their resolve to fight, to make them want to surrender. But the British were very tough, and they held in, and Churchill had become prime minister, and he said, we're never going to surrender. We're going to fight everywhere. Hitler wanted to do a sea invasion of um, England called Operation Sea Lion, but it never came to pass. The German Navy just could not handle the British Navy. And so the British Navy came to the rescue to hold things out. But 1941, look what happens here. All of this area here in the Balkans is taken over. The Italians try to take over Greece and they blunder. Hitler sends his soldiers in and they take Greece and Crete and then Yugoslavia. All this section now is safely in Hitler's hands. And from that in June, he launches Operation Barbarossa. And look how much territory they get in one year. They almost get Moscow. They almost get all of Leningrad. Just a little bit holds on. But they're driving deep into the Soviet Union. And by December of 1941, the war is going the Axis way, at least in Europe. This drastically changes when the United States is attacked at Pearl Harbor. The Japanese attack Pearl Harbor in 19, December 7, 1941. The United States declares war. They're no longer neutral, although they had been aiding England quite a bit. And we'll talk about that later on. The... The United States enters the war, and though they don't do very much in the beginning, what Germany does is Germany and Italy declare war on the United States. Now, America was not at war with Germany. With Germany. We, our fight was with Japan, was going to be with Japan. But Germany and Italy kind of do a favor. It makes the United States not have to take the position of saying we're violating neutrality in the, in the war in Europe by Germany declaring war in the United States. It opens the door for America to enter the war, and by the spring of 1942, American soldiers will be landing in French Morocco and in Algeria. So America will enter the war, and you're going to see over the next, uh, through 1942, the tide starts to slowly, slowly shift, and Germany starts losing possessions first in Africa, and then by 1943-44, Russia, and they'll be fighting along here by time of 1944. And then in 1944, the Allies will invade northern France here at Normandy. And it will basically, the force of losing Africa, being attacked in Sicily and Italy, then in northern France, and throughout the war, the tremendous efforts and uh, combat of the Soviet Union against the Germans, will turn the tide. 
So our quick key question is, is why was December 1941 the high point of the access of the access? And that will be posted in Google Classroom as your assignment today. Have a great day.